So I'm a landscape photographer, but today I'm trying out wildlife photography for the first time. So I understand a couple things about wildlife photography and number one, that's to use a long lens, which I'll get to in just a second. And number two, you need to be pretty patient, which is probably my least strong thing I can do in any kind of photography. So today should be an interesting adventure. The reason I decided to do this was I'm actually trying out a brand new piece of gear, the OM System OM-1 Mark II and their 150 to 600 millimeter lens. I'm not sponsored by OM System, but I'm really excited to use this camera and test out this lens as well. This is a spot where I've already seen a couple Canadian geese out here and some water birds as well, but I wanted to test out this massive zoom all the way up to 600. There's a Canadian goose all the way on the other side of the lake. I'm gonna see how far this can reach. So I thought I'd set up here and just kind of get a low perspective and take you guys through the process. Oh, where did it go? You wildlife photographers, be easy on me in the comments, please. And give me some tips. Oh, went up in the grass. All right, guys, I'm getting a really low perspective here to try to bring in some foreground blurring of the grass. This is really doing a good job tracking the subjects with autofocus. So I'm at one one thousandth of a second, f6.3. ISO 400. It's not the most amazing shot, but kind of fun. Got its eye open on that one. So as we go through this, I'll just give you guys some thoughts, comments on what I'm doing right, what I'm doing wrong with this wildlife, and also give you some thoughts on this camera and lens as we go through this. But um, so far, the autofocus tracking on this, if you're using the bird tracking feature, is phenomenal. Uh, it does a really good job. That goose was like just way over here on the other side of the shore and at 600 millimeters with on a micro four thirds camera uh, is equivalent to like 1200 millimeters, something like that. And it did just a phenomenal job finding it right away. I am finding I need to stay a little bit hidden. I did wear a camo hat. I thought I was supposed to do that, but apparently it's not working very well. So here's kind of what I'm discovering is that yoga is really paying off you got to stay really low to the ground and observe where these birds are kind of perching what they like to perch on uh, because it looks like certain birds like to go on certain things i've got a lot of these cool shots of this bird let me know what you what kind of bird this is in the comment section i'm not a bird person uh, but they specifically like these cattails to hang out on so it's observing a lot of where birds like to be and what they like to perch on. Also being very attuned as to what's going on with the sound of everything and noticing when a bird is around you. Now on the camera side, what's fun about this is it can easily pick things out. I talked about the uh, AI detection of birds tracking really well. Also does a great job shooting at high frame rates and up to 120 frames per second on this thing. So you're not gonna miss a shot when you're photographing birds, animals, wildlife, anything like that. One thing I'm discovering for composition here with wildlife photography is getting the right moment, but framing it up so that you're putting more space towards the area where the bird is looking or the direction that they're going so that it is a nice seamless composition and not making it kind of this moody kind of photo. So having it a peaceful scene is putting the bird's direction or view or action towards the side of the photo that has more negative space or open space in it so that the viewer has more area to explore whatever the bird is looking to or going towards. It's actually a pretty big hawk out this way. I don't know if I should stay right here and wait on it or if I should go chase it. Because in landscape photography, you chase the light wherever it goes, but with wildlife, I'm not really sure if that same applies. Like, do I abandon one spot or do I wait on it and then the action to come to me, you know? It's kind of that balance of staying hidden and staying quiet versus going and attacking and trying to find the shot. I don't, I don't really know what to do in this situation. Decided to abandon where I was go chase this thing because it's swooping in the same area and it looks like it's really trying to hunt right now so i'm gonna go see if i can get a shot i got fairly close to it but i think i may have should have stayed put you know in landscape photography 
you're not far from the action if you see something going on, but chasing this hawk around, man, I got close to it, but in a split second, it's like 600 yards away again. Patience, again, lesson learned. So a couple more things while we just wait here is uh, number one, don't try to chase down a hawk, won't work. Number two, it would be nice if I had a stool or a small chair. Number three is to kind of let the birds do the work for you. So if you're wondering where to look for certain larger birds, hawks, owls, eagles, anything like that, usually there's gonna be more commotion and chirping and dive bombing around an area where there is a larger bird of prey. So that is something that has become very apparent here today. Also on this camera, the 120 frames per second setting with bird autofocus tracking is phenomenal. Light years ahead of its time. Light out here today, good, not great. For me, waterfalls are my main thing and this would be phenomenal light for waterfalls perfect weather for it you know for bird photography wildlife photography having a little bit of that golden hour glow in the landscape and on some of these birds as they fly into action getting a little shot of uh, golden light on them would make the photos a little bit better so the lighting is a little bit dull but i still feel like we're getting some pretty good shots today i'm discovering with this camera is that the image stabilization not only with the lens but with the five axis stabilization inside, it actually does a really good job because if I'm not pressing the shutter halfway down, it's all over the place. But if I press the shutter halfway down, it's as smooth as silk. It works great on leveling and stabilizing any handshake, especially with a lens this long. That's pretty key and important. All in all, this was a really fun adventure. Do I like landscapes more still? Yes. However, this is a really good way to scratch the photography itch that can happen so much. So it's a good way to get out, just hike around, walk, get down on the ground, get dirty. And it's really fun to just scratch that itch, try something new, and it can make you appreciate photography a lot more. If you want more photography videos, click or tap this playlist showing up on your screen right now.